everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now this week we are going to be tackling a very, very interesting topic, which is that of big, giant, chunky bars of silver and how easy they are to sell at the other end of the investment or stacking process. Been inspired to talk about this subject this week by Silver Joker, who made a fantastic video how he sold a 100 ounce bar of silver very quickly and easily and busted the myth wide open that these big, giant, chunky bars are very difficult to unload quickly if you needed to. So I thought it would be good this week to share my thoughts and opinions and experiences of having bought and sold big bars of silver. We're talking the big boys, 100 ounces, 50 ounces, kilo bars, even down to the kind of, uh, you know, the slightly more uh, manageable 10 ounce size bars of silver. Now today's video is just meant for education and entertainment style purposes. It's not a financial advice video. I am just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things here on YouTube. So any financial decisions you make having watched today's video are yours and yours alone. I'll have to admit, I've also been inspired to talk about this subject today because we've just had back from the Edinburgh Assay Office the first ever Backyard Bullion Kilo Plus bar of silver. So I'm giving this its rightful dues and showcasing it here in today's video. But we'll have a look at that in a little moment. I want to start first with the big giant 50 ounce bar here. Now, a lot of people really love big bars of silver and ultimately there is nothing wrong with having a big giant chunky bar of silver and I guess that's the underlying message I want to portray here. You know, silver is silver, it's precious, it's always going to have value at the end of the day and there's this misconception out there on the market that all big bars have huge risks associated with them of being fakes, of having lead cores, about having, you know, tungsten cores even if they're uh, really big bars. If you have a small tungsten core, you can get the right weight, the right dimensions for these type of bars. And you see some right horror stories out there of people who've chopped these bars in half, like I've done with this SS Garris Sopa bar. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But you know, they've chopped them in half and found out that their big bars are fake or they've taken them to their local coin stores and they just can't sell them because the local coin store don't want to take a risk on them. But in my opinion, silver is silver and these big bars will always have their value. And my experience is that these bars are quite easy to sell. Now, that is partially down to the fact that for myself as a seller, I've been now selling on YouTube and for the Silver Forum and eBay and various other social media platforms for nigh on three years now. So I've built up quite a seller reputation and that really does play a factor here. So, you know, I'm speaking from a position where I've got an established sort of seller profile and if I put something up for sale and if somebody else puts the exact same item up for sale and they are a complete unknown character within uh, a forum or Facebook or wherever it might be, you just know that somebody is going to prefer to purchase from myself than from this nobody. So, you know, that is something to factor in. However, I am a firm believer that silver is silver and it is valuable. And as Silver Joker proved, you know, these bullion dealers, these companies online will be quite happy to take large volumes of silver, even if they're 100 ounce bars, I would imagine even a 1000 ounce bars, they would be able to take them. Gosh knows how you'd get a 1000 ounce bar in the post to some of these companies, but it is definitely possible. Now, some of the reasons why they are difficult to sell, let's address some of those. So yes, there are fake big chunky bars out there, but they are fairly easy to, to test and spot if you know what you're doing. But that does often lead to destructive style testing. And uh, you've, I've seen this on many different um, channels, you know, people have cut bars in half and they've seen the fakes. This is what a real silver bar should look like if you've cut it in half. Now this 10 ounce Garisopa bar, uh, don't worry, I have not cut this up specifically to demonstrate in today's video. These are going to be melted down with three others uh, to create another Backyard Bullion Kilo Plus bar. But I thought it was really very cool to see what a silver bar looks like when it's cut in half. And you can really see the silver all the way through the bar there. This is one of the surefire ways that various different bullion dealers and local coin stores will use to test their silver. I've even seen it on, uh, you know, the History Channel with the um, the pawn shop show, uh, what, what was it called? Uh, the one in Las Vegas, there was a big haul of like 3,000 ounces worth of silver that came into the shop there. He took it away, he drill tested a bunch of those big bars and came back with them. And they had huge holes in them, but he was certain they were all silver and then took them away for a price. So 
you can get your money back for these big bars. But because the dealers have to do that, they are, well, I mean, if they cut them in half, like I've done with this Garisopa bar, the only thing that you can do with this now is melt it down and then either resell it as another Garisopa bar if you if you were the manufacturer of these, or, you know, melt it down into something else like I'm going to do and sell it on for something else. So, you know, from that perspective, these Coin shops are not going to give you any kind of premium for these. In fact, a lot of the time they will give you below spot prices. And in the UK, it's even worse because if you send one of these big bars into one of the big, uh, big places like Hat and Guard Metals, you'll be looking at 75% of spot price, if not less, because ultimately these big bars, they don't have that kind of retail potential for us in the UK because of the sales taxes and because of all of the barriers that go around with putting these in place as uh, you know, a second-hand item and all of the, the hoops you have to follow through with for the tax man, it's just not worth these dealers' time to do it to make you know, maybe a pound an ounce profit or something on them. It's just not worth it for their, their time. So that's why they only offer sort of the 70% uh, spot price. Whereas with little one ounce coins, the benefits of, of course, having one ounce coins is everybody knows what the dimensions, weights, and everything of a one ounce coin can be. They're also a lot thinner. So that's an important thing to talk about. So, you know, we've got here some kilo bars, these big chunky ones. Even if you've got a Sigma Metals machine, it will not detect big chunky bars that have fake cores in them like these. So these one ounce coins are perfect for that because you can just slot them on a Sigma, Sigma machine or an XRF machine and they will know straight away whether or not they are perfect. The problem with having a bunch of coins is that you then have, unless you've got one buyer who wants to take 50 coins compared with a 50 ounce bar, You've then got to keep them all in perfect condition. You've got to store them right. Hopefully they don't all milk spot. So there are definitely benefits of having a big chunky bar of silver like this. And that is that you can just have it as an investment in the silver alone. You don't need to worry about its condition. You don't need to worry about milk spots. Now, there is a solution that I can foresee about this problem of dealers. Now, it's one which might be a little hold a little bit more sway in the United Kingdom. And that is in relation to this big kilo bar. And here is the big reveal of possibly one of the coolest things that I think I've ever seen. This is my hallmark. Now, a hallmark is an assay test and mark that's been put on this bar, in this case by the Edinburgh Assay Office, as signified by the castle mark there. The U is the year date to say it was done in 2019. 909 is the guarantee that it's 909 silver and the BYB says that I made it. This is as good as chopping the bar in half and making sure that it is silver all the way through because the Edinburgh Assay Office have tested this bar. They have made sure without a shadow of a doubt, they've put their reputation on the line that this is a pure bar of 999 silver. There is the stamping on the back. The owner of the bar decided to call it Arendil after the Lord of the Rings. Um, very, very cool little lantern of special light that Galadriel gives. Um, Frodo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings, he thought that was a fantastic choice of name to put on this very cool bar. And it's the first one we've ever done for the Backyard Bullion Kilo Plus series. So it's serial number KG Plus 001. Really cool, very happy. But this is what it's all about. This big laser etched hallmark. Now, if you, I'm going to feature this in another video, don't worry. But this is really cool. It's very tactile. You can actually feel the 3D etching of the laser there. But that is a guarantee of its purity. And it'd be very interesting to see whether or not that holds sway with various different dealers out there. Maybe it's an interesting topic to do a video on at some point in the future. Now, of course, with things like these bars, they come at a premium because I've taken a lot of time, energy, expenses. The hallmarking alone is a pretty big expense for this bar. So this is not really something that you would want to sell online to a we buy silver very quickly type place. And that's touching on the last part of this part of the, or the whole video, which is talking about selling the silver at the right time to the right market to get the right return. Now, that's the one thing I think I've learned the most from this whole experience of being a silver investor and buyer and buying silver and selling silver online. You need to have a really, really good understanding of what the different avenues of sales are and how to exploit them to get the best returns on various items. Now, I grant you that is not always what people are going to be looking for. If you need to have a quick sale of something like this 50 ounce bar, 
this Engelhard 50 ounce bar, you'll be hard pressed to get what the true value for this bar should be. Uh, it being a premium older bar that's got a pretty limited mintage and looks really very, very cool. This is, you know, something that if I needed to, I could sell very quickly, but if I wanted to sell it and get the best return for it, it would be about finding the right buyer who maybe collects Engelhards, maybe is looking for a Engelhard like this. And, you know, there is a market for these. It's about understanding the different markets for them. It's not being greedy and it's not, you know, exploiting other people to get the best premiums out of a particular item. It is simply about making sure that the items that you've got, you understand what your strategy is about them and how you're going to sell them when the time comes to it. I bought this bar because I know that I have a very fortunate position of having a, you know, as I said, quite an exposed seller profile. If I was to sell a fake bar, if I deliberately, you know, knocked off a customer, I have a lot to lose in my business. I have a lot to lose in my social media. That, you know, is a huge deal for people like us who have these big profiles and we don't want to risk those kind of things. So I know that I can take the time and look to sell this to the right person at the right time and that's one of the luxuries that I have. And I grant that it's not something that everybody will have. So that, I hope, is a pretty good overview of some of the experiences I've had of big, chunky bars. I have had bigger bars than 50 ounces. We've had a couple of, in fact, we had five at one point, 100 ounce silver bars. And my experience, again, was that they sold pretty quickly. In fact, I had one of them that I purchased from a Silver Forum member just to experience what it was like to have a big 100 ounce silver bar and I specifically bought it knowing that I probably would make you know make evens or loss on it depending on silver prices and uh, I bought it I enjoyed it and then I managed to sell it at a very small profit so it was one of those things where you know it's it's a risk you've got to understand those things you've got to understand the risks on those uh, but ultimately it's down to each individual person about what kind of risk level you want to take with them Big bars of silver though, there is definitely one thing in their favour. They are very, very cool and there is nothing cooler than holding a 50 ounce or 100 ounce bar of silver in the hand. It is really something to behold and it's something I would highly recommend if you could ever get your chance to have a look at one. Even if it's just in a LCS and you want to just get one out to see what it's like, if your LCS man is lucky enough or happy enough for you to uh, fondle a 100 ounce bar, then let me tell you that is a sight to behold and a treat for the brain sensors, because it's really heavy, it's very, very strange. I like to call it the brain weight ratio. It just doesn't make sense how dense and big and heavy it is. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section about your experiences of buying and selling big, chunky bars of silver. It'd be fascinating to know what your thoughts are and whether you've had experiences of fakes or whether you've had experiences of local coin stores not wanting to buy them or being lumped with uh, something that you can't sell quickly and how you've handled that situation and what you've done to sort it out. It's very, very interesting to find out your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's video, if you enjoyed the topic and my presentation of it, then please do hit the thumbs up button. That really helps share everything around on our social media here through the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, that is about it for today. If you want to see videos from us in the future and you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. And if you want notifications, make sure the alarm bell is turned on. Otherwise, have a fantastic week. Thank you one and all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.